Electrodynamics is the 15th level in Geometry Dash, released in 1.7. It sits between Club Step and Hexagon Force on the level menu and is probably one of the most controversial official levels due to one thing, its difficulty. I've heard a lot of debate in the previous years about whether or not Electrodynamics' current rating of insane is appropriate. Before 1.9, this was an even more outrageous comparison, as the ratings of earlier levels used to spike up in difficulty much quicker, with the first insane level being Can't Let Go instead of X-Step, which it is today. But even with the rating revamp, comparing X-Step to Electrodynamics still seems a bit odd. I mean, both are insane levels, yet one is clearly much easier than the other. Now, you could chalk this up to the updates they came out in. Electrodynamics came out much later, and therefore, there were many more elements that could have been used in the level, making it naturally harder. I mean, Finger Dash is also an insane level and that's clearly harder than next step, right? Well, is it? I mean, sure, Finger Dash has the Spider, Wave, Robot, and UFO, four game modes that weren't even in Update 1.3 when X-Step came out, but I'd argue the gameplay they have in Finger Dash is equivalent to what they would have had in X-Step. I mean, let's compare two sections of a game mode they did both have, the Cube. Disregarding new orbs, when you strip these two levels down to their fundamental components, the gameplay is very comparable. Compare this now to Electrodynamics' cube segments. Faster speed combined with tighter jumps, to me at least, shows a clear gap in difficulty here. So, the question of the day here today is, should Electrodynamics be a demon? Today, I want to look at all the official Robtop demons, except Explorers because that's on its own tier at this point and it's not even out yet, and search for some similarities between them. Then we're going to look through Electrodynamics and see if any of those traits are present there as well. So without further ado, let's jump in. To start, I looked through videos of all three current Robtop demons and noted down some sections I thought showed clear demon difficulty that helped to boost the level's rating up to it instead of just being an insane level. So we're going to go through those lists now, starting with Club Step. 16% Invisible Cube Maze. This section makes heavy use out of fading blocks, which are much harder to sight read than regular blocks, combined with rapid jumping and falling back to back. 31% Invisible Spike Ship. This again uses many invisible spikes, forcing you to either straight fly or memorize their locations to pass. 45% Fake Floor. This is, to my knowledge, the first time that fake walls or floors were used in an intentionally deceiving way. They're used in Clutter Funk, but they're the only obvious way to go there. Here, at quick glance, it appears as though there is just no way to pass since the visible difference in the blocks is pretty subtle. 52% UFO Section. Just generally tighter timings with a much smaller margin of error than in other levels. 69% Nice. Invisible Spike UFO. This is the same reason as the Invisible Spike ship from earlier. 73% Ship. This combines aspects from the Invisible Spike ship and the Fake Wall section. As we can see here, Club Step is very much characterized by its usage of invisible blocks, spikes, and fake walls or floors. This makes sense since the ability to do this in Geometry Dash levels was a pretty new thing at the time, so you'd expect that the developer would include this feature in his harder levels. Now let's skip ahead to 1.9 and inspect Theory of Everything 2, the second Rob Top Demon. But before we move on to that, I just want to remind you all that if you are enjoying the video so far, to hit subscribe baby, yeah! We absolutely demolished 100k and now we're setting our sights on 200k, let's go! Alright, back to Theory of Everything 2. 12% Fading Block Ship. Same thing that Club Step did, but cranked up to 11, with invisible blocks, spikes, and slopes here for you to navigate through, with only the gravity portals as reference for the entire part. 36% Fading Block Ship again, uh, but this time there's breakable blocks in the mix, and if you pick the wrong path, you die. This part is essentially unsight readable unless you get like crazy lucky or have insane reflexes. 57% Memory Ball. This part relies again on invisible blocks and speed for difficulty, requiring quick reflexes and memorization to navigate through. 78% Tight Ship Part. This part is a pretty infamous click with a tight timing, and being so late in the level, this can really be a run killer for newer players. Although there's less sections here that are specifically harder than the rest, there's still a lot of noticeable trends. There's a consistent theme again with fading blocks, but Theory of Everything 2 also just generally has much tighter timings throughout the entire level. Some of you might be wondering to yourselves why I haven't been mentioning fake orbs as well, since both levels have had a good amount of those so far. And simply put, it's because some of the non-demon levels do too. Just look at Can't Let Go. Alright, it's time to skip ahead for the final time and analyze Deadlocked in Update 2.0. This update adds moving objects, so we can expect those to be a factor for a lot of the difficulty, even though they weren't in 1.7 when Electrodynamics came out. 
12% first wave. This part has much tighter wave gameplay and it's at triple speed. 21% first ball. This part makes heavy use of fake platforms, which if you think about it, you can kind of draw a parallel to a platform with invisible spikes. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. 36% mini ball. This part uses a lot of teleport portals, but even disregarding that, a lot of the timings here are still pretty tight. 57% teleportal ship section. While this part uses a lot of teleport portals, the actual flying involved is generally fairly tight on its own. The disorientation from the teleport portals only adds to it. 72% dual wave. As with the first wave, this part features fast wave gameplay with very tight timings. As a veteran GD player who has beaten five extreme demons so far, I still die here like half the time when I play deadlocked. 80% memory ship. I want to give an honorable mention to this part since, yes, it's pretty hard and it's easily the most infamous segment of the level. The actual flying involved isn't too terribly hard if you were to like make the platform static. So, that's all for the Rob Top Demons. As we can see, there's a clear trend of invisible spikes, fake walls or platforms, and generally tight gameplay when it comes to game modes like the ship and UFO. So all that's left to do now is go through Electrodynamics itself and see if we can draw any parallels. Since it's not a demon, I'm just going to go through and describe how I feel about the difficulty in general. So, let's do it! There's nothing too hard in the first cube up until the drop, where we're introduced to fake spikes. This is a step up already from other insane levels, but it's not too bad and it's only like two jumps anyways. At 20% you have a mini segment in the cube part with an invisible cube maze, just like Clubstep did, albeit a lot shorter. The ship segment that follows is fairly hard, especially starting at 29% where you can't even rest on the tops of the platforms anymore. The 32% UFO has incredibly unconventional UFO gameplay that requires sitting on the ground at certain points to consistently get through, with generally tight gameplay through throughout the whole thing. After you go through the mini portal, the unconventional tight gameplay continues as you navigate through the saw blades. The level then drops back down to easier gameplay, which you'd expect from a level of this difficulty anyways, and it's all fine and good until we reach... Oh shit. The triple speed ship section was straight up impassable for me as a kid. In my opinion, it's still probably the hardest section of the level, requiring tight but also controlled flying. But this section isn't even the worst offender. After this, you go through a quick ball interlude, then back to a mini ship. This part requires the same tight flying, but requires even more control as you can't just fly down and then hold hard up. At each peak or valley, you have to do a little bit of actual flying before just holding up or releasing to go down. Luckily, after this point, the level is mostly a victory lap, except for a couple challenging forces spike jumps near the end. A lot of people seem to have had a good deal of trouble with the final ship segment when they first started playing the game, but I personally never thought it was that hard. But based on the majority of people, this section also contributes to the difficulty. So we've gone through all the Rob Top Demons and Electrodynamics, and now it's time to decide. Are there any parallels here? In my opinion, definitely yes. Both Electrodynamics and the Rob Top Demons make heavy use of similar elements. While the Rob Top Demons definitely seem to lean more into the fake out elements like fake walls, spikes, and blocks, Electrodynamics seems to embrace the more precise and tight gameplay that's found in the demons as well. In a way, Electrodynamics is a demon in disguise, since it doesn't use any explicitly visual elements that are similar to the demons. Since the difficulty is almost entirely from the gameplay, you can't immediately tell that it's like a demon, but you can definitely feel it. I've looked through all the other Rob Top insane levels, and after the inspection I've done there, I can safely vouch for the fact that Electrodynamics has a solid case for a rating upgrade. If the Rob Top demons ever got specific ratings like Easy or Medium Demon, I think Electrodynamics would fit well as an Easy Demon. Do I think this will actually happen? <laughs> No. At least not in the near future. While I think it'd be cool, Rob has made no mention of re-rating any of the official levels, and this isn't something that people seem to really care about, so there's no lobbying behind the cause. And honestly, that's fine with me. I think it's kind of funny having Electrodynamics there with its innocent looking insane face to entice new players only for them to get humbled by the reality that it's much more akin to Clubsep than it is to Clutterfunk or something. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this little analysis on Electrodynamics. Special thanks to all the channel members including The Carl, Vil Alder, Gato, Wintera, Not Kip, Breadboy, HXC, Penji Plays 149, Zand Lol, I guess, and Zand. If you guys were ever to make an official level, there would be no ambiguity about the difficulty at all, and I think that if you guys were going for an insane level, you could actually make an insane level instead of a shifty demon level. Thank you guys for all the support, it means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys all in the next video, or song.